Hello, um, this is our first episode of the women's vlog that we're working on, and today I have Courtney Kane with me as an interview, so hi Courtney. Hi. So just tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get started. Okay, um, I'm Courtney. I've been going to Grace uh, consistently for like six-ish years, um, but I was going before that when I was younger. Um, I'm a grad student getting my master's and soon to be getting my PhD in applied mm-hmm. behavior analysis. And I also work um, as an ABA therapist. Um, I'm on the women's leadership team and I help with events and things like that. Um, yeah, and that's, that's about it. <laughs> that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. All right. Yeah, so. I love it. I'm real excited to get into this interview. So I'll start with the base question since, you know, we're in isolation. So yeah. how has quarantine been treating you? Good. I mean, I can't really complain. I'm at home. I'm healthy. My parents are here. They're healthy, you know, so that's really good. I'm able to still work. I'm working from home, which is its own adventure <laughs> doing my job. If you can imagine, you know, teaching kiddos with autism or a computer. Yeah, I can um, imagine. But you know, I'm still able to do it. And that's, you know, that's been pretty good so far. So do you think the, it's been harder with the technology for the kids or like, do you think they're adjusting to it? Well, yeah. So I think it depends on the kid. We have, we have a couple, like, you know, we have some kids that are really, they're having a harder time with it. Their parents are doing most of the stuff with them. We have some kids that are doing really great and they're like talking to us through the computer and they're interacting with us. And like, we couldn't have met, like we threw, we had to come up with this last minute so um we weren't sure what it would look like for any of the kids we were just like we're just going to try different things until we find something that works um so it's you know unfortunately not ideal but not much is ideal at this time right. so um but they've been doing pretty good so far so yeah. at least they're finding their way so that's good. yeah exactly all right so then um, what is the thing you are most excited for when you get out of quarantine? Oh well, two, I have two things. One would be just see my kids, my students. Yeah. Like I can't wait to see them like in person and actually like, do things with them. Um, and also and you can see my people, you know, I just, being at home is not fun for me. I'd rather be out and about and like, you know, be with my people so it's nice to see them on the computer but it's not the same as seeing them in person so like I just can't wait to be with them in real life (laughs) I feel that like being like I am such an extrovert so like I love being with people so this whole computer screen it's been nice because at least I see people um but it's just not the same as being with those people I like that's the one thing I agree with you like it's I can't wait to see people (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like, not, I'm not really like, I'm not a huge hugger. I'm not real touchy feely. I'm not like the person that's like, I'm talkative and I'm extroverted, but like, you know, with my group of people. So like, I never realized how much I missed being like surrounded by people until I was not. (laughs) Yeah. Right. It's like, you don't realize what you miss until it's gone. And then you're like, Oh wait, what is this? I'm back. The people that hug me, even when I don't want to hug, I want them back. (laughs) <laughs> I want my unwanted hugs back. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so then what has been something you've learned during this quarantine? Um, Either about yourself goodness. or the situation? I'm learning, I'm learning to knit. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, you have I'm to show. Not, okay. I'm not very good and I've not gotten very far because, you know, grad That's school. Yeah. But I am learning a little bit. Of, I'm going to try and knit a scarf. And maroon's awesome. my favorite color, so that's why. So oh. we'll see. I'll, nice I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, keep me updated. That looks pretty good. I tried knitting a scarf, and I got two lines done, and then I was like, mm, this is not my calling. Like Shelly's going to be proud. Yeah, I feel like she's going to see that and be like, yes, I'm proud of you. Just needs more glitter. <laughs> <laughs> the end. <laughs> Throw some glitter at the end in a tiara, and then it's perfect yeah. for her. All right, so have you had any struggles in this quarantine? Yeah, definitely. Um, so for me, so obviously like trying to balance has been like a really big struggle because, um, although now I have some extra time cause I'm not commuting to school or work, I have more time and being able to do some things like exercise more and like read books for fun that aren't grad school related. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but also like with all my work being here and my school work, but also like my work work being here, I find myself spending more time doing that stuff and like just not creating those, those boundaries that just would come naturally from like having a commute and having to drive home. And like, so just me trying to find those boundaries has been difficult. Mm -hmm. And also like I kind of mentioned before, like I never really spent that much time at home like this, like I slept here, I ate here. And then I went about my business. So being home so much is a challenge for me and not going places. So do you feel like these boundaries that are being broken down have like really impacted like your workflow or like any of your like mental state or anything like that like because I know yeah. always constantly being home and feeling trapped has made me feel like I don't know like really um I don't know like there's some good days and there's some bad days yeah <laughs> definitely. Where, you know yeah I mean some days like when I get a lot done I'm like ooh, I was really like I really got a lot done today that's awesome but um it's also like really contributed to some of my anxiety. Like anxiety has been something I've struggled with for as long as I can remember. Like, I think like the earliest thing I can remember is like when I was in third grade, I cried hysterically because I left my homework at home, like oh. in the classroom, like just broke down in tears because I was like, and I didn't have a name for it then. But like, really, like, I look back, I'm like, oh, that was anxiety. And it's been something that's been a struggle and ebb and flow since then. So like now I think not having those boundaries and not having that natural break where I can just like decompress on a drive home that's 45 minutes long like I'm not it's more challenging it's becoming a bigger thing than it was for a while so has this time like exasperated that anxiety or has it I don't know made it worse or has it like made it a little easier to manage or have you had to like learn how to manage it in a different way than what you've learned previously it's a little of both. So sometimes like it's easier because I'm like, okay, like I have more time to do more Bible study or more like listen to more worship music that I maybe not like wouldn't have been able to do during the day as much. Like that's really helpful. But also like other times it's made it worse because I'm constantly with my own thoughts and like just mm, replaying yeah. things or thinking about all the things that I could be doing better, or could have done differently or what does this person think of what I did there? Does this person think I'm doing enough or not doing enough? Or like, you know, when you get alone in those thoughts, it tends to spiral and become bigger. And with my anxiety, at least I don't want to speak for anyone else, but like it becomes more overwhelming and it becomes harder to kind of focus on what I know to be the true thing. And like what really matters, which would be like what God thinks of me. So like, is he think I'm doing what needs to be done and what's right? And is he like what I'm doing? But you know, you get caught up in those things and they become bigger. So it's something that I'm like trying like really hard to focus on. Like, okay, I know that for me, listening to worship music really helps. I know praying first thing in the morning really helps. And like making sure I'm making time for those things and like exercise is something that really helps me. Um, I'm having a really make a conscious effort to make time for those things especially because the boundaries are broken down a little more isn't it crazy that we're in quarantine and we have all this time but at the same time we don't like it's like yeah. because I think what you hit it like with those boundaries like we used to have boundaries we used to have like routine that we were used to and now this is like mm. so out of the ordinary and it's like breaking down all of the things that we were used to so in this yeah. quarantine time, have you found that those same um, coping mechanisms that you used for your anxiety or however you want to word it, uh, with like prayer and worship music and working out, do those still help in this quarantine time or have you had to be a little more creative with your anxiety on how to get yourselves out of that, um, those negative thought spirals that like just exasperate it? They still really help. They're still really helpful. Um, one thing that, that is a little hard because my one thing that I really always have was like I have a support system. Like mm -hmm. I have friends that I have a couple, like two friends at school that know about uh, my anxiety, and I have a couple people at church that know. And like I can still text them, of course, or call them on the phone. Absolutely, they're always there for me. But um, not seeing them as frequently, like um, I find it harder to reach out when I'm having a hard time with that versus like, if I just see them, like they'll notice, they pick up on things, you know? Um, so not having them there to ask or to notice has made it harder. But the other things like, um, prayer music, as long as I make time for them, they still help keep me 
in check <laughs> yeah for sure so do you have like a go-to like worship song like when you're really feeling it okay so I don't know the name of it it's by Plum I think it might be like whatever the the song name maybe somebody will know watching this but like the lyric is Probably like comments. how many how many times have I asked you to take this from me um and like basically just like she's like I need you like I think maybe I need you now maybe mm-hmm. oh wait I know this song wait oh it's not breathe is it no wait it could be breathe I don't know she's great but it's one of the two Alexis gonna look it up yeah but, okay. um Spotify on my phone but like that lyric is like how many times have I asked you to take this from me like I've prayed that and I like the first time I heard it, I was like oh my gosh like I've prayed that and I've asked that and like you're need not you taking yeah, need you yeah, yeah, I think it's you need you now. Yeah. Um, that's but a good like, thought. so like that's one like that just like it like feels really like I connect with that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like, you know, I mean, I like a lot. I like Hawk Nelson right now. He's pretty mm-hmm. good. Or yeah, they, yeah. I don't I guess a band. Yeah, oh, um, yeah, every day, yeah. But that one like just hits me like right, mm-hmm. you know, there. And also another favorite of mine would be Cornerstone. Oh yeah. Uh, I love that one. It's so just, like if nothing else, like at least that's there. Like that's like your rock. Like that's mm-hmm. it. If everything else fell apart, if you know, in my head, like anxiety worst case scenario, I go to like, I did the worst job. I'm gonna mess up everything. The kids never gonna learn. I'm gonna mess them up. I'm gonna create, you know, some issue. Or like this person's gonna think I'm weird and they're not gonna like me and they're not gonna want to be my friend and they're gonna tell other people like it, you know, spirals, but like if all of that happened, if all of those worst case scenarios happened and it were just me, it's not just me. It's just me and him. And that's like, that song means to me. Those are two, those are really great songs, actually. I love yeah. Cornerstone. And I think, I think you hit something that I really, I want to dive into a little bit more. Um, how has your walk with God been impacted with your anxiety? Because you said here, like, especially with Cornerstone as a your worship song reminder like even if everything worst case scenario if, if all your anxieties came true like it wouldn't matter because you have him so how how has he helped or helped you uh, get through this or how has your walk grown or changed yeah, with so, him uh oh what so I so my anxiety is like the reason that I became a believer. So like, Ooh. and I, and I remember this like, like crazy. So I was in like fourth grade, third, fourth grade, something like that. And uh, we were talking about like, you know, you have to believe and like, they're talking about what hell is. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, like, no, that sounds terrible. Yeah. <laughs> what am I going to do to get away from that? Like, that is not what I want. I'm not yeah. down for that. <laughs> Like, and I, I used to have like, I would not read Revelation for the longest time because it would give me an, I would try, I would give me an anxiety attack. I would like feel like I couldn't breathe trying to read it because just the idea of the world, physical world around me ending and not existing, even though I knew I believed, like it was terrifying. It was mm-hmm. in, in crazy, but um, so thankfully he might my walk with him has grown since then. It's no longer just some fire insurance. But, <laughs> I like I heard of that. You know, so like it's, I, I would say like, um, it's been like up and down, you know, so there are times like I can look back on like days and like also see where it's been, you know, pretty like plateau, like, you know, nothing good, nothing bad, not really much anxiety. Everything's great, you know, to things, you know, going up, like my anxiety has led me really close to him. Like, you know, because I'm so anxious, the only thing that feels right is to pray. And that's great. And those are good times. And then like, there were times where it's not so good and it's pushed me away. And like, you know, in those times, like you look for other, cause we're human. We look for other solutions when it feels right. like God is far or when it feels like, he's not giving you what you want or what you think you need. We look for something that's right in front of us. And, you know, and then that tends to spiral because you get caught up in those things that seem like good fixes, but they're quick and they're temporary and they're short term. And you are, at least I like, you know, like you try those for a while and they, they feel good, but you have to keep doing, doing them or you have to keep finding different things. It's long term. 
um, you know, and then, and then it comes back around and, you know, like you see, or you f- I start to feel like that's not right. Like I'm, that's not the right thing, you know, and sometimes that's quicker than others. And, you know, now I think like, I'm kind of on an upswing in terms of that. Like my anxiety is not going away. Mm-hmm, right. Uh, I've been, I had prayed for that for a long time. I've stopped right, right, like praying for it to go away. Cause it doesn't seem like it's leaving. And, but how do I deal with it? And like, so I still have my moments where I'm like, just like, you know, like, you know, push away. I don't want it. Like, why would you let this happen? But it's a lot quicker in terms of the turnaround instead of it being a longer issue. Like, you know, when I was in college, it was a long time of where I was looking for quick, easy. It felt like he was really far. So why did I want to be with him? Mm -hmm. Um, Now it's like, I'll, I'll notice it like in an hour or a day. I'll be like, wait a minute. Like, what were you doing? that the right way to handle that like you and I'll bring me back and then I'll like pray and like okay like I can do this with you I can't do this on my own um yeah so like recently something that came up and I'm doing an online Bible study with um through Lifeway Jennifer Rothschild oh yeah um, yeah okay and it the one she one day she brought up this verse it's first thessalonians 5 18 which says um give thanks in everything for this is god's will for you in jesus christ um and she goes it doesn't say be thankful in spite of all things so like you know a lot of times we'll say you know this is bad but i've got my health and i've got my family and i've got my friends and i've got you know food or whatever but that's not being thankful for the thing that's being thankful in spite of the thing right like okay so and that was something like I I'm anxious but like you know I've got enough food and I've got enough money and I've got this and that but like how can I be thankful for my anxiety and that's something I'm still like working on because it's still a relatively new idea to me but like some things so far that's come out like I can be thankful for it because it's brought me closer to God Mm-hmm. As, as much as like the walk's been kind of windy ultimately it's bringing me closer and closer to him and like I see that over time like really like that trajectory has happened and it's what brought me to him to begin with I can be thankful for that I can be thankful that it's going to help somebody else to hear about it um even though I don't want it I still wish that he would take it away like right. I don't like it it's not fun it's not cool to feel like, you know, like that the idea, like, so, like I'm constantly worrying about what other people are thinking or like feeling like literally all I want to do is cry in the corner because somebody else is going to watch this video and know, like, they're going to know everything. I don't, I don't tell any, I don't tell people, I don't tell a lot of people about this. So, like, the idea of somebody else knowing is really difficult and it challenges my anxiety like this whole morning has been tough for me before we're recording this but I know that ultimately like this is his story mm-hmm. and he's going to use this to help somebody else but so I can be thankful that even though right now I feel really anxious about it something good is coming out of it so like that's that's been a really cool thing that he's been teaching me about it we'll see might God. be more to come. Okay. I love that verse. Can you say that verse again, actually? Yeah, it's First Thessalonians 5.18, and it's give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And that's the Christian standard mm-hmm. version. I'm sure it's worded slightly differently. <laughs> in every ways. version, yeah, probably. No, but I like that. I like that it's not in spite of, or it's be thankful for all, all of these things. And it's, yeah. it's something that we should remember because we may not understand why we go through what we're going through like you may not understand fully why um you have anxiety or we might not understand fully like we're in this point like that COVID-19 is happening or the the seasons of our lives that just seem so overwhelming or so detrimental to ourselves like we may not understand why we have to endure them but we should be thankful through through them in them for them because whatever they are, they're part of his plan and they're part of his story. As you said, like our testimonies, like what you shared today. And I'm so happy that you shared with us today because your sharing is his story. It's God, it's his work through you. And now hopefully this, and I think it will, will bless other, other people, other women to see, and to also notice, reflect on their own lives, how all of this 
is his story and we may never understand the whole picture or what it might be but that we should be thankful that we are part of it in some capacity um I don't know have you ever seen the the prince of Egypt like the the animated version no Uh, first of all should it's so good anyway so there's this (laughs) one scene um and it's basically the story of Moses and it's when Moses's father-in-law um, is explaining to him how God sees us. So it's called Through Heaven's Eyes is a song because it's a okay. musical and it's really good. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so in it, he says that we're all, like basically we're all a thread in this huge tapestry. And as a thread, we don't see the whole picture, but God is creating this tapestry, this gorgeous, beautiful tapestry, and we're a part of it. And even though we don't get to see through the ups and the downs and the weaves and the wafts or however, all those knitting terms that you're, I'm sure you're learning that <laughs> I'm not, um, all of those terms, like despite, the good the bad like it's making this beautiful picture that we may not ever see in this lifetime but one day hopefully we will see his his glorious vision his glorious picture and I think that's kind of what you're hitting and I thank you for sharing of course yeah thanks so much um and I'm just gonna end with a one more question if you don't mind um if you had well like um if you could give Uh, a word of encouragement or advice to the women during this time. And I'm just coming up with this because I I feel like you would have some good words. Um, (laughs) What would you say to the women watching this? Hmm. Well, okay. I'm going to go with two. The first is like, if you're somebody that's either struggled with anxiety for a really long time, or maybe right now is really an anxious time for you. um, Sometimes you'll see like things posted on like Facebook or like Pinterest or whatever that are like, oh, like, you know, God will take away your anxiety or whatever. If that's not true for you, that's okay. Like, that's okay. Because that it's his decision and his will, not yours. So it's okay to still struggle with that. and doesn't make you any less of a Christian and any less of a believer. I think that's really important to remember because that's something that took me a long time to figure out. Oh, yeah. Um, But just in general, um, my advice would be don't sit all day long. It sounds silly. It sounds silly. But seriously, one, it's just like knock over your body to sit. You got to (laughs) move. All day. But also like you're going to start to, if you're just sitting all day, you're going to start to like sit in those thoughts, sit in your thoughts and like things will come up that maybe you don't, not that you don't want, need to deal with, but like maybe just not the time where like you might like start to sit and then at the end of the day you're like oh man I did nothing today so like get up every so often go outside when it's things like that yeah, go for your some, mental health get some vitamin d it's good for you yeah yeah listen to some christian music yeah we, we gave you some suggestions find a podcast yeah listen podcast to that yeah right like yeah connect with people even though it's hard continue with your support system definitely all important yeah well thank you so much for taking the time Courtney this has been this has been great I really enjoyed it and um I hope you ladies join us for our next episode um yeah so thank you and god bless you and goodbye bye